So hello everyone. Um, today I will talk to you about babka ledger, babka as a cake, uh, which is a Byzantine fault tolerant drop replication technology designed for high throughput and slow latency. This is joint work with um, Michael Wei, Ted Dean, Hong Bo Zhang, and Dalia Malki attending labs. So any platform for decentralized applications, smart contract, has many difficult problems to solve, which include but are not limited to transaction dissemination, double ordering of transaction blocks, transaction block validation, transaction execution, and also not necessarily in this order, but this is consensus day, so we will focus in total ordering. Uh, among the set of nodes, uh, we assume that f of them might fail uh, in an arbitrary way, so Byzantine fault tolerance. And we also assume for this protocol partial synchrony, that is the network is uh, synchronous until some unknown point in time when it becomes synchronous. So the latest wisdom in distributed systems research on how to achieve high throughput total order broadcast or consensus in this setup is by building a DAG. We also saw Bullshark earlier uh, protocol, but let me quickly recap how a DAG is built and why it is a useful tool, uh, very briefly to be on the same page. So let's assume a set of validators. V0 here has assembled a block of transactions or transaction hashes, and V0 consistently broadcasts the block to all other validators. Uh, if V0 is correct, this means that everyone will deliver the same block. Assume now that V0 has himself previously delivered some blocks and V0 wants to broadcast a new block. Uh, now V0 adds a new block, references the blocks it has already locally delivered and broadcasts the blocks with the references to all other validators. The validators, uh, if they don't have the, block, uh, the blocks that are referenced uh, locally, they fetch them from other validators and link them to the new block. Repeating this process, Every validator creates a consistent view of a direct acyclic graph or a DAG. Now, making a consensus uh, decision on top of a DAG is very simple, as we also saw in the Boxer protocol. Uh, usually, uh, DAG consensus protocol structure broadcast in rounds, and based on the round number, some validator is uh, a leader. Uh, some validator's block is a leader block. Here is an orange block. And as soon as sufficient number of blocks reference the leader block, the leader block is considered committed. But importantly, along with it, all the non-committed blocks in its causal history are also committed too. And then by following some deterministic graph traversal protocol, we can create a total order among all committed blocks in the DAC. Now, DAC protocols are great for a few reasons. First of all, they allow parallel broadcast invocations, and this allows them in turn to achieve high throughput because they utilize uh, all the system resources in an asymmetric way. Moreover, uh, what is important is that they decouple and essentially broadcast from ordering. That means that uh, broadcasts can continuously happen even under, under faulty leaders. And um, uh, when a leader is faulty and the consensus decision needs to be postponed until we find a correct leader, uh, we still continue to broadcast uh, uh, blocks that will be eventually correct by some correct leader. This allows high throughput even under faults. The drawback of, uh, DAG, uh, of, of consensus on DAG is latency. Uh, we saw yesterday um, in Alberto's talk that SWE protocol, for example, tries to avoid consensus decisions as much as possible because when compared to consistent broadcast, uh, they suffer um, much higher latency. And this is because they always need to wait a few rounds until the little block is committed to commit all the uncommitted previous blocks. So we asked ourselves a question. What if we could build a total order of consistently broadcast blocks without the leader? And this is what we tried to do with Pabka Ledger. So essentially, we assign blocks to sequence numbers, which correspond to, slot, to slots in a replicated log. And we allow validators to independently and in parallel choose a slot in the log and consistently broadcast blocks to add them in this slot. When a block is uh, delivered and added to some slot, we say that this block is finalized. And here, this is represented by a single green tick. And as soon as all previously blocks are finalized as well, the block is irreversibly committed to a total order and can be executed here represented with double ticks. So now you may ask, what if two validators try to add a block in the same slot? Very well, 
that's a good question. Uh, so this is why we came up with Babka, uh, a novel broadcast primitive that guarantees unique sequence numbering. Uh, when invoked uh, by different validators for different blocks and for the same sequence number, Babka guarantees that at most one block will be delivered with a specific sequence number. However, it still guarantees that all blocks when it is invoked by a correct validator will be eventually delivered consistently. Uh, and now again, the next question that we may ask is, uh, okay, what we, if we always have uh, uh, conflicts or contention and sequence numbers, how do you coordinate validators? And this is why we introduce a ticket master functionality. The ticket master functionality, I leave it here abstract and I will not go to much detail because it's, uh, uh, it can be implemented with several policies and we still uh, have work in progress there, but it can be essentially something as simple as a round robin uh, assignment of sequence numbers to validators. But now recall that Babka does not necessarily deliver blocks with sequence numbers, and we still need to resolve what happens with those blocks that are delivered without sequence numbers. So this is where we utilize the nice properties of a DAG. We can always add references in the blocks that we broadcast uh, to the previously delivered blocks. And hence, uh, while we build our replicated log, we in the background also build a DAG. And uh, this DAG also contains uh, the blocks that are without sequence numbers because they are always delivered by Babka Broadcast. And now we can utilize DAG so that uh, once uh, a block with, uh, is added to some slot in the log, it's committed to some slot in the log, it can commit along with it all the previously uh, added in the DAG and uncommitted uh, blocks. So here in this example, we build a, a DAG and we have uh, blocks F and C that do not have a sequence number. However, block I is committed to slot five and I can also commit along with it F and C. Similarly, block um, K can commit with it uh, um, block H. So it still remains to resolve uh, an issue. I, I said earlier that Babka uh, guarantees delivery if the sender is correct, but what if the sender is not correct? Or what if we always have contention on some sequence number? We don't want to rely on the ticket master for that. Um, and since we are in a partial synchronous world, we cannot wait forever to decide what happens. And this is why we have all validators locally run timers on the uh, uh, slots with the lowest sequence number that are not finalized with some, with some block yet. Uh, here, for example, we have the such block to be uh, such slot to be slot with sequence number four. And what happens once the timer expires? Once the timer expires, the validator uh, needs to inform their local Babka instance for this sequence number to stop trying to decide what happens with this slot, basically. And then uh, and the, it does this by uh, a finalized call which the Babka interface exposes. And then Babka returns via an announced interface um, its internal state with respect to the sequence number so that the validators can run a fallback protocol to decide what to do with this slot. If there is some block that could have been added to the slot by any validator, all validators should add the same block there. Otherwise, they should finalize the empty slot with uh, uh, an, ill, uh, an empty uh, uh, block uh, to allow blocks in, uh, high, in, in slots with higher sequence numbers to eventually commit. And to decide what happens with an empty slot, we need a consensus protocol. So we will only use the consensus protocol as a fallback to decide what happens with expired slots. This could be any consensus protocol such as hot stuff or even an asynchronous consensus protocol such as Jolteon. But since we already build a DAG, we will use a DAG. And uh, we implement as a consensus protocol, Fino, uh, which is a simple consensus protocol on top of a DAG. And uh, to implement our fallback protocol, we allow our blocks to contain metadata. Uh, so once the validator finalizes uh, a Babka instance for some sequence number, it uses Babka again to broadcast uh, whether its local instance um, has uh, uh, decided, has dictated that some block could have been added to the log or not. Uh, and then a consensus leader of the Fino protocol, once it references a quorum of such finalization blocks, uh, it implicitly proposes what should happen with this block. 
And once a validator locally delivers F plus one votes, this number comes from Fino consensus protocol, uh, the leader block can be committed and the validator can locally apply the proposal of the leader block. And because we run a consensus protocol, we know that this uh, is consistent across all validators. So we guarantee that eventually all validators will decide in the same way what to do with the expired slots. So let's briefly see also what uh, Babka does internally. Babka internally, in the good case, runs something that looks very much like Braha Broadcast without method simplification. If you are familiar, it's a three step uh, old world protocol. And uh, if we have a contention on a sequence number, uh, it guarantees that no validator ever echoes uh, the same sequence number for uh, uh, different blocks again. Uh, but this might cause Babka to never be able to finish. And therefore, Babka needs an internal timeout. And if this happens and the timeout for some validator expires, Babka needs to indicate that this happened and it sells a yield message indicating what happened for this particular sequence number uh, with a ready certificate. The ready certificate indicates whether uh, some block could have been uh, delivered by Babka with the sequence number of the instance. Uh, the sender of uh, the, set, the validator which has invoked Babka gathers these uh, yields uh, messages and then invokes uh, a, a normal uh, reliable broadcast uh, for uh, the block with or without the sequence number based on what the yield messages indicate. And this um, library broadcast has an external validity predicate that um, guarantees uh, that the leader uh, is not uh, trying to cheat with respect to his decision. So this leads us to be able to talk about uh, Babka uh, performance versus uh, some consensus on a DAG. And um, we can, uh, estimate that uh, Babka uh, performs in throughput very similar to consensus on the DAG. This is because we utilize a DAG to ensure that no broadcast goes wasted, basically. The happy path latency, however, with Babka is very uh, nice. It's just three network steps as, as long as everybody does their job and fills the log uh, slots. Uh, cons uh, the consensus on a DAG has to suffer the consensus latency, which depends on when the leader commits. Uh, latency on their fault, is uh, in both cases, uh, depending on some timeout eventually to happen. And then for Babka, we need uh, a Babka latency for the finalized blocks and then some consensus latency to decide what to do with them. A consensus on a DAG protocol needs to uh, find eventually some consensus to decide what happens with uh, uh, to commit the previous blocks. I had uh, an example on Babka, but I will skip it because I see that I am out of time, but it's basically how to build multisig on the shared log. And the important message here is that we don't need always to wait for uh, all blocks to commit. There are use cases where just consistent broadcast is enough. And this is why Babka exposes uh, an eager finalization event to allow such protocols to take advantage of the low latency of consistent broadcast. So to summarize, uh, our ingredients for a low latency and high throughput uh, uh, platform for decentralized applications are four. Babka, which allows low latency parallel sequence, uh, parallel sequence broadcasts. A ticket master to avoid contention as much as possible. Uh, a DAG to ensure high throughput either under faults or contention. And finally, uh, consensus only as a fallback when we need it to guarantee life. That's it, thank you very much.